Eodromius is a very exciting find as it may well represent one of the earliest theropods. Its hands display the transition from five digits to three, with the fourth and fifth digits being much smaller than the first three. The combination of the two types of teeth has been seen to suggest that Eoraptor was a generalist omnivore that adapted to the availability of different food and prey, still, it may have had a preference for one type of diet but still feeding upon another type to balance out nutritional deficiencies that were in the other. Z Zupasaurus was once considered to be one of the first tetanoran theropods, stiff-tailed theropods that would become the dominant forms during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, though today it is considered by most to be a basal coelophysoid theropod. Gojirosaurus is one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs known from the Triassic period, almost the size of its relative, the large Dilophosaurus. Cool names aside, it is considered by some to be a dubious dinosaur genus. Coelophysis is frequently used as an example of the early dinosaurs, its bones were hollow making is very light. It has been suggested that it was a cannibal, based on supposed juvenile specimens found within the abdominal cavities of some ghost ranch specimens. Coelophysis remains can be subdivided into robust and gracile forms, and it is now thought that these represent males and females of the species. This sexual dimorphism is also clearly seen in group concentrations of its remains, and shows that they would at times cluster together. It is still unknown if this is evidence of an established pack, or just a number of individuals taking advantage of an abundant food source. Dilophosaurus is a very distinctive dinosaur that is instantly recognizable by the two crests that are on top of its neck. The crests themselves are most likely there for display, and could have been brightly colored, particularly in the males. In Jurassic Park, the Dilophosaurus is portrayed as a cute, playful, dog-sized critter, but this dinosaur measured about 6 meters from head to tail when fully grown. It did not have a powerful bite, due to weakness caused by the subnarial gap, it used its front premaxillary teeth for plucking and tearing rather than biting, and the maxillary teeth further back for piercing and slicing. It was probably a scavenger rather than a predator. Cryolophosaurus possessed a distinctive pompadour crest that spanned the head from side to side. Based on evidence from related species and studies of bone texture, it is thought that this bizarre crest was used for intraspecies recognition. Its brain was also more primitive than those of other theropods. In the early Jurassic, Antarctica was closer to the equator and the world was considerably warmer than today, but the climate was still cool temperate. Models of Jurassic air flow indicate that coastal areas probably never dropped much below freezing, although more extreme conditions existed inland. Because the crest of the Monolophosaurus is hollow there has been past speculation that it may have been a resonating chamber to amplify sounds, the reality however is that the hollow construction of the crest was merely a weight-saving feature so that the crest did not become so heavy that it would have difficulties moving the head. Ceratosaurus has been known to science since towards the end of the 19th century, and thanks to its head ornamentation, has long been one of the most popular. Another interesting feature that seems to make Ceratosaurus unique among the theropods was the osteoderms that ran down its back. The purpose for these is not exactly known. Osteoderms are often evolved as a form of defense and if this were the case with Ceratosaurus, then that could suggest that there were other larger predators at the time that would not think twice about attacking it.
The skull of Deltadromius is so far unknown but the recovered post-cranial remains suggest a fairly agile and fast predator that may have preyed upon ornithopod dinosaurs similar to Aranosaurus. Swift speed may have also helped it to stay out of the way of other much larger meat-eating dinosaurs. Lemosaurus underwent a drastic morphological transformation as it aged, while juveniles were toothed, these teeth were completely lost and replaced by a beak with age, corresponding to a shift in diet from omnivora to herbivora. The overall appearance of Elephrosaurus is that of a lightweight hunter that relied more upon speed rather than strength to take down prey. The tibia in particular is longer than the femur which is a good sign that Elephrosaurus would have been a fast runner. Noosaurus is only known by very partial remains which makes it difficult to ascertain specific details about this dinosaur. At the time of its discovery, it was thought that it had an enlarged claw on the foot, analogous to the sickle claws commonly seen on Dromaeosaurids. The most striking feature of Mexicosaurus is the way the front teeth point forward and out of the mouth, furthermore the front teeth curve upwards at the end creating a hooking action, this would have greatly increased the ability to catch small, fast-moving prey. Cryptops was considered to be the most primitive known abelosaurid, it is notable for the heavily textured surface of the maxilla, the presence of pits and impressions of blood vessels indicates that there was a covering firmly attached to the face, perhaps of keratin. Abelosaurids are known for their proportionately weaker bite forces, especially when compared to the mighty tyrannosaurids of the late Cretaceous. A possible scenario for a scavenging lifestyle of Rugops can be inferred from possible special facial features as evidenced by the presence of blood vessels, it could be that it flushed blood into the soft tissue of its snout or sported some kind of soft tissue feature that allowed it to intimidate other carnivores from a carcass by making itself appear more threatening than it actually was. A characteristic that Majungasaurus shares with other members of the Abelosauridae are the underdeveloped forelimbs, these also appear puny in Majungasaurus, with the fingers fused together. The evolutionary implications for this discovery are quite significant as while it is known in birds, birds are thought to have descended from the Tetanurian line of dinosaurs that includes the Manoraptors of the Coelurosauria, the most direct ancestors for birds. Majungasaurus is not Tetanurian, it is Ceratosaurian, although both groups have their origins with a common ancestral group, while you could argue for a case of convergent evolution, the fact that this respiratory system appears in both lines that diverged from the same source indicates that it evolved before the split. This means that the origin of the system was dinosaurian, not avian, and further establishes the evolutionary link between dinosaurs and birds. Abelosaurus was the first of the Abelosauridae group of carnivorous theropod dinosaurs, a relatively new group that seems to have been most common across southern hemisphere. It would have had exceptionally small and underdeveloped arms compared to other theropod groups, even the tyrannosaurs which are often noted as having small arms probably got more use from theirs than the Abelosaurids had. Acosaurus was smaller than the related Carnotaurus, although more derived in some ways, such as its extremely reduced arms and almost total lack of fingers. The type skeleton is complete to the 13th caudal vertebra, and so is relatively well understood, and is the most complete abelosaurid yet described. However, the skull is damaged, causing some paleontologists to speculate that it was involved in a fight prior to death. Carnotaurus was highly specialized and distinctive. It had thick horns above the eyes, a feature unseen in all other carnivorous dinosaurs, and a very deep skull sitting on a muscular neck. It was further characterized by small, vestigial forelimbs and long, slender hind limbs. The skeleton is preserved with extensive skin impressions, showing a mosaic of small, non-overlapping scales. The mosaic was interrupted by large bumps that lined the sides of the animal, and there are no hints of feathers.
The distinctive horns and the muscular neck may have been used in fighting conspecifics. Its feeding habits remain unclear but it was well adapted for running and was possibly one of the fastest large theropods. <laughs>